There isn't just one way to celebrate 420, and there isn't just one way to enjoy your THC. Mood can help you achieve just the right high with their federally legal flower, gummies, vapes, and more. I prefer a nice mellow high, especially to help me fall asleep. Celebrate 420 exactly how you want to with Mood. Get 20% off your first order plus a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com with promo code SUPERMEGA. That's hello, M-O-O-D, dot com slash supermega. It's time to puff, puff, pass. Woohoo! Brothers podcast, the only podcast for a group of people who love wearing beanies, not to cover any physical deformities, although I'm sure it's fine if you do. Do we're just we're just using it as a fashion statement. It, does baldness count as a physical deformity? No, because mm. you know I'm sure a lot of guys wear beanies to cover up male pattern baldness. I was thinking like a like a third leg or like a finger growing out of the top of your head. I don't know if a of, if a beanie would cover up a third leg, but a, but but a finger. Like, but it would be like an infant's leg because it didn't didn't get to grow. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sick. Just a, just a baby's leg sticking out of the top, or like a, That's awesome, <laughs> or like a nose, just a single toe. If you had to, if one one part of your body. If if like a, magi- a wizard came up to you right now and was like Ryan, look at me, boy, and I look at him right in the eye, he goes, "I'm gonna duplicate one of your body parts right now and put it on your forehead." Which <sighs> w- what are you choosing? I almost want to go. No, not an eye, because then someone could poke my third eye. But that could poke your first and second. Yeah, too. but it gives him another option to go for in a fight. That's true. Maybe like a Johnson. No. But- but if you put your penis... That's a hard one. Well, it'd be soft most of the time. Yes. <laughs> I was, I was kind of waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. You say, hey man, you set me up and I fucking... You, you I, threw the ball and I hit it. So this isn't like a gift. It's a curse. I curse you! Well, I guess, you know, it's in the eyes of the beholder. Maybe I'd get like a whole hand so I could like... So it could hold things. For Ooh, me. the body part works, by the way, whatever yeah. it is. Like a wrist and a hand. So, like, if I get scared during a movie and I do this, it can be a third kind of blinder? Yeah, if you can accidentally, you're like, oh, no, I could see through my finger cracks and I could still see the scary thing. Yeah. You know, this can come down and cover, cover up, up the rest. any of the cracks. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'd probably pick, uh, I don't know, a third eye would be pretty cool. Well, I already opened that after smoking ayahuasca uh, with some shamans. <laughs> but I don't know. Honestly, a third eye would be neat because uh, I feel like you'd be able to see, be able to see more depth. Because everything's 3D because you got two eyes. You see two different angles. How do spiders see? Through their eyes? All eight of them? Yes, that was the more direction I was going to. Oh, I thought, okay. It's retor- I, I thought you were asking, how do they see? No, it would be like, how, how do they envision the world with all of their eyes? Right, right. You know, maybe a nose. You could smell twice as strong. No, I actually, I don't want to do that. I want to, yeah, you I don't think. don't like my hand and wrist idea? No, I think that's a great idea, but I can't copy you. Especially if you, if your two hands slip, it can be there to kind of grab like something. It might rip your neck off because you don't have, you, don't, you know, there's no connecting muscle, I guess. You're falling off a Looney Tunes ass cliff. <laughs> it, can, <gasps> it can grab onto like a, a, a tree root that's sticking out at the last second. 
I don't understand why, like, I haven't seen our ideas in Hollywood yet. Like, this is a perfect kind of, you know, the cliffhanger movie with Sylvester Stallone? I remember the cliffhanger thing from uh, Read Between the Lions. Did they already make a cliff cliffhanger too? Cliffhanger? Is it about a guy that's hanging on a cliff? Mm-hmm. Really? Yes. That's actually what it is? 1993, yeah. See? Look at the poster. Just a guy hanging from a cliff. Ooh, I hate that. That's so scary. Uh, okay, outdoor thriller in which a former mountain res- rescuer is pitted against a group of criminals who have lost their $100 million stash during a plane crash in the Rocky Mountains. What? After being persuaded to help rescue a group of stranded hikers, he discovers that they are, in fact, a gang of violent robbers who need help to locate their missing loot. So I don't know how much cliff hanging. I'm See, guessing they, they force him to help find it and then he probably goes all rocky on them you know and beats them up and and saves the day see i'm gonna be honest i thought this whole time because of the poster and everything i thought cliffhanger was just about a guy that went rock climbing and then just got caught hanging got stuck (laughs) i thought it was gonna be like a like a one location thing kind of like 127 hours where he's just hanging from the cliff the whole movie help me it's like i'm still stuck there's two different camera angles (laughs) and it's all real time the like wide kind of Mm -hmm. all encompassing or there's different wides there's the wide where he's just flat you know you see him right his back and then there's the one where you can see like a, a distant mountain or something I mean, you got the close-ups. Yeah, you got the close-ups. Different angles of that. So actually, we could get quite, quite creative. I think you and I, that should be our, our first film that we write and direct together. Should be about a man that's rock climbing, and he gets stuck, and he's just hanging there. <laughs> and then I'm guessing in my head as a kid it would make sense, because when, when Cliffhanger 2 came out, I'm, Cliffhanger 2 is confirmed with Sylvester Stallone, so it will be coming out. Dude, he's like 85. The sequel will He's take He's stuck place on the cliff Swiss again. <laughs> well, I don't think Help! that was the premise of the original movie. Help! Cliffhanger 2 is... Oh, fuck. I was, that, I, I, kinda, I was hoping that you and I would be able to make a cliffhanger sequel, but actually make it more appropriate for the name. And it's a... like it. Maybe he does hang from a cliff. It just for, throws for out the story of, of the first one, and it's just him getting stuck on a... On a, on a Rock face. I'm going to ask Google right now, how long does Sylvester Stallone hang on the cliff? Because he has to hang. It's on the poster, man. Sylvester Stallone has to hang for a bit. Interesting. How long does he hang for? Well, someone on Reddit went, I rewatched Cliffhanger and counted every second that Stallone hangs from things. Nice. So I'm going to look at this. Hang time, a cliffhanger. And total time spent hanging, 173 Seconds. I thought I was about to say minutes. I was no. like, whoa. Uh, he hangs from a ladder for 71 seconds. He hangs from a rope for 28 seconds. Cliff? Uh, he hangs from a cliff for 28.2 seconds. So not even not even half a minute, and they named the movie after it? Yeah, helicopter, 22.4 seconds. Cave, 17.9 wow. seconds. And the bridge, 5 seconds. Is his name Cliff? Is it like a pun because his name is let me, Cliffhanger? Let, let me look it up. Hi, I'm Cliffhanger. I know you're not serious, but I do want to know what his name was in the movie, The Cliffhanger. It better be Cliff. Dude, can we make a short film about a dude that hangs from a cliff, gets stuck, and his name is Cliff? (laughs) His name was Gabe Walker. I think Gabe Itch would have been a better... (laughs) Gabe (laughs) Itch. Ooh, Michael Rooker was in this movie. John Lithgow was in it. John Lennon? (laughs) No. I love John Lithgow. Who's John Lithgow? What? I, I probably know the face. I just don't know the name. Lord Farquaad. Oh. Classic. <laughs> he was, um, uh, he was, I know he was in Dexter, but I never really watched it. I just know that he was in it. He was, he was in Third Rock from the Sun, I, I think, or whatever that show was. I've heard uh, that Dexter starts off so good and then just as time goes on, just becomes absolute ass, which sucks because it seems like a really good premise for a show, you know? Yeah. Did you ever watch any of Dexter? Uh, his laboratory. Yeah, same. But, I watched, but no Dexter. Not a single episode of Dexter has been watched. Has this brain interpreted? I don't think I haven't either. I I knew a kid in high school that was obsessed with it, and he kept trying to get me to watch it. And I was like, No thanks. I'll stick to my Breaking Bad. Sounds like the beginning of like a true crime podcast. He was obsessed with Dexter, a show about killing. <laughs> he kept trying to get me to watch and then it. He got his friend to watch it. 
He felt alienated from this friend, so he decided to do what he thought he had the right to do in that moment, that night. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish Ewu videos uh, and Long JCS sentences. were were just they, they just went with the first draft. <laughs> like they don't clean up the script at all. It's just the run on sentences and messed up grammar, and uh, we haven't even talked about our sketch. Have we not? No, we didn't. We didn't talk at all about the. Uh, about uh, the uh, the Stuart Pecan uh, interrogation sketch. It finally saw the light of day. Uh, prob- m- more time went into that. The, the music video was kind of somewhat already done, just had some minor, you know, fixes up. But yeah. we put that out because that had been so long since we filmed it that we thought that would that should be put out first. But this was also being worked on behind the scenes. We were we were working on this back in. November. Yeah, I think November was when we filmed the interrogation scene. And the interrogate, we, had, Ryan and I improved and rifted the whole interrogation. Same uh, with Luke. Same, yeah, Luke. I mean, we had like points to hit. Yeah. We seem to work the best when we are a little like open. We're like the Judd Apatow of YouTube. That's what I like to say. Don't compare us. Okay. Uh, funny people? <laughs> we, could, we could make the funny people YouTube show. YouTube doesn't do shows. Funny anymore, people, though. funny brothers. YouTube, do they still do original series? I'm going to look YouTube up. Red series? No, the YouTube Red is dead. <gasps> oh, nice rhyme. He rhymed, <laughs> guys. He did it again. Um, YouTube, it's YouTube Premium now, but I don't know if they... YouTube. Why didn't they ever give us an original show, an original series? We could have made a smash hit, you know? Maybe they were scared it was going to be too successful and it would overtake the whole platform. And then every other YouTube Red show would just look like shit in comparison, you know? I mean, there are... I mean, the thing is, it's it's YouTube Originals. Okay, I got to look up YouTube Originals. YouTube Originals. Miranda Sings had her own show? Or maybe that was like Netflix. Like a talk show? No, no, no. Like a scripted show about Miranda Sings. About the her character with the red lipstick and the well, this was five the epic years ago though comedy very epic comedy I watched some of it at Aaron Hansen's F- house it seemed, yeah most of this was like five years ago I guess they're they're not putting money into that not anymore <sighs> they didn't even give us a shot they didn't even give us a fucking chance to make the best YouTube original series on the entire platform it would have been it would have been one of the best but yeah. I, I don't want to give too much away. Instead, uh, we'll just have to go with Netflix or Hulu. Dude, I would love to... Go with Peacock. Peacock is doing pretty well. Honestly, hey, if, if there's anyone here that works for a streaming service that has original series, Brian and I would love to write, direct, edit, and star in our own original series. But it has to be a crime thriller. <sighs> Slash horror. Come on, no, dude. Slash suspense thriller, which is different than a regular thriller. Romantic comedy? A little bit of that thrown in there, just yeah. just just for that demographic. I think I think we could make a good series. I want a little bit of everything except comedy. We need the we need challenge to spread ourselves. our wings and challenge ourselves. Yeah. I think that's great. Much like a, a a mother bird launches her babies out of the <laughs> nest in hopes that they'll fly and glide to the, safely to the yeah. Floor. I love I love it's just like well, you better be able to fly by now. <laughs> Pushes the baby out. <laughs> that uh, is a. Uh, that's that's evolution, baby. That's that's nature. That's mother nature. Wait, we didn't finish talking about uh, the interrogation video. Yeah, so we we had like key points because uh, we had, we had beforehand kind of roughly come up with like, all right, so this guy obsessed with Family Guy kills his family, uh-huh. and uh, then we thought of we were thinking of some of the goofy uh, like you know like the Nana Nana Boo Boo stuff like that, and yeah. then we just sat down and went for. How long did we record for each time? Like 30, 40 minutes? Yeah. It was all a one-take interrogation. Yeah. So we sat down and just would improv from start to finish. And we did uh, three takes. So there's three uh, recorded sessions of, of, you know, going through that whole plot. And how, the- how long in between did we record that and then the we actually rent – not rented. We, we got an Airbnb and shot there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the the one and only George Clanton. That's right, Officer Clanton. Officer Clanton did a did a wonderful job. He texted me uh, about an hour ago and said that he was out at a cafe and someone came up to him and said, "Thanks for getting that creep Stuart Pecan off the streets." I hope he I hope he said, "You're welcome." Yeah, I, I hope and he, he didn't did. just look at them like this. 
What are you talking I about? I make music, you little freak. <laughs> I was in one video. I knew I shouldn't have been in that fucking video of theirs. I knew I shouldn't have collaborated with those two little fuck boys. Damn it. (laughs) Now everyone just knows me as Officer Clanton instead of hit music pop star George Clanton. (sighs) This is truly a cross I will have to bear for the rest of my days. But he said that he said the guy worked at the cafe and he said apparently gave him his meal for free. Ooh. For being such a good officer, maybe we should go there. Or yeah, maybe, maybe we should. <laughs> what if he gets enraged because he actually believed it was like real? And so, like when you walk in, he goes, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> like he gets really enraged. Makes an actual that. like murderer just walk in. <laughs> Does no one else see this sick fuck just walked in? Has anyone seen the case? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, but we, you know, we had we had some fun. We riffed it, then we rented an Airbnb, and that was the. Uh, the house from the beginning for the police body cam footage. Who the person um, showed up while we were filming. Oh, my God. Okay, so we were uh, in the process because we had to film the outside stuff with you, like, snacking. and uh, uh, But the, the funniest parts that people like is, you know, the toaster. Uh, Wait. The officer made himself toast? <laughs> what the F? Go into the comments and sort by newest on that video. <laughs> Every other comment toast. is about toast. But uh, in spe- uh, specifically... At this point, we were in the shoot. We were staging the bodies in body bags and like bloodied them up. Got a got a fake carpet, not a fake carpet, but a, a carpet that wasn't the Airbnb owners. Right. We bought our own carpet, bloodied it up, let it dry, and then put it yep. on the floor. But the the Airbnb, I guess, owner rent uh, uh, land land rent land prints <laughs> came by and. Uh, through the screen door just kind of started watching was like Uh hey is everything all right in there hey guys and we're like yeah everything's great we don't want him to know what we're doing (laughs) because you know he might be mad that we're filming something was weird well the couch george was on was blocking the carpet the the rug that i had just covered in fake blood and my hand was covered in fake blood (laughs) because i had spread it around the carpet and he's he just kept asking us questions about like obviously trying to stall the conversation to see what was going on he's like did you guys find parking okay and i was like yeah i parked right out front and i held my hand up pointed Mm -hmm. covered in blood also he probably was very confused because we moved all of the furniture (laughs) outside of the living room (laughs) outside well here's the thing because he had a ring he was probably watching us move his furniture out they're like why are these guys carrying the couch (laughs) out onto the patio they we, roll we, up the rug? We kind of stacked. Also, he probably looked to the stairway and saw his furniture, like the stair, like because he had chairs and stuff that we put like up there in a car. His other carpet we put up. Oh there. yeah, we took like the table and the chairs and stuff upstairs, and it was the type of stairs that go up, and then there's like a little very you know, narrow stairway landing, and then they keep going up. We just put all the chairs and stuff up at the top of the stairs, which you could see from the door. So he probably just looks in, sees we've moved half the furniture around, and the other half is outside uh, in the driveway, basically. And then all the chairs are up at the top of the stairs, and you've just got these three weird-looking dudes <laughs> that are just, hey! Not coming outside to say hey and be friendly. That oh, is- yeah, because we just all stayed where we were. So, like, he's outside. He never the- came in, right? No. It was always through that screen He's door. standing there, and we none of us made the effort to go, like, up to him. We all just stayed in position because— Hey, we're professionals. We're professionals. You know, we had a job to do. But, yeah. Listen, he let, buddy, he left how about you buzz off and let us do our thing, H- Holmes? Home slice? <laughs> home slice. Well, also, then there was another great thing that happened. He left, and we're like, ah, oh, sweet. We got away with it. Uh, we filmed the stuff, and then we had to take body bag pictures. So <laughs> we, we stuffed... Four actual body oh bags. Oh, my God, yes. We, th- these are real body bags we got off Amazon. We mm-hmm. stuffed them with pillows. And uh, sullied them with blood. Then we put them on in the driveway, just lined them all up side by side so we could take an evidence photo that looked like a real, you know, murder scene. And let's rewind real quick. When we get to the Airbnb, we notice that there's a little garage-type t- t- house, mm-hmm. like, in the backyard, where we're like, oh, that, that most people just use that for storage. It's a shed. Junk. It's a shed. Um, so, that, so that's there. We're like, okay. We go into the main house, do the shoot. Fast forward about an hour, an hour and a half or so. Continue. And we're, we're you know, 
putting the body bags out in the driveway. Taking pictures of the body bags. Uh, we have, like, crime tape and stuff. And then this this couple, maybe, like, late 20s couple, just comes out of the garage because I guess that was also a separate Airbnb <laughs> that a couple was staying at, and they were leaving to go probably get dinner or something. And they come out, and they just see these body bags, and they didn't say anything. They just kind of looked at it all weird. And I wonder if they were if they thought maybe – because you come out and you see body bags lined up, your first thought is, holy shit, some people died. Yeah, this is like that. I, I do think that in their brains, they're probably like, oh, these are like cringy film students that... Trying to make a deep, <laughs> yeah. you know, serious, but dramatic we're, short we're film. making a, a short film about... Uh, not a short film. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a short film. Sure, it's cinema. It's, you know? a, it's a nice piece of comedy. Yeah, it's a, it's a short film. Uh, but, but yeah... They so they saw it and they just didn't say a word and they opened they the gate and, and kind of watched us for a bit. They they took their time just yeah. kind of looking around, probably to make sure that there weren't actually four dead bodies like, right there at their Airbnb. They're they they were just going through like fight or flight. They were like, maybe we just chill and act like we're just kind of like hanging out and we act normal and they'll act normal. Honey, that one has blood all over his hands. <laughs> Did you see what the fuck were those guys doing? That one looks like vaporwave pioneer George Clinton. <laughs> But he's dressed up like a police officer. It was a, that was a really fun video to not only shoot but really to edit. And because after we had shot that stuff, you know, we we shot the uh, and if you haven't seen the video, pause this podcast and go watch it. It's, it's one of only, our best. It's only about twenty five ish minutes. Twenty one. That's why I said ish because I wanted the, it's tw- it's over twenty. I don't want to say twenty ish and then it's over twenty minutes and then people are like. <laughs> Too long. A little over 20. It could still be 20. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, if I rounded, it would have been more 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but basically... Uh, yeah, go on. I, um, but, um, but, ba- uh, yeah. but, 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 the ah, thing... Fuck. Um, basically... Really was... Uh... 420's just around the corner. And to celebrate, I've decided to binge all seasons of The Mandalorian. It's gonna be a killer time. But there isn't just one way to celebrate 420, and there isn't just one way to enjoy your THC. Mood can help you achieve just the right high with their federally legal flower, gummies, vapes, and more. Browse by different moods and get 20% off your first order, and a free THC pre-roll with promo code SUPERMEGA at hellomood.com. I prefer a nice mellow high, especially to help me fall asleep. There are different strains for specific moods, from euphoric to energized, creative to chill. I like the chill ones, because I I need help getting to bed. I need help chilling at the end of a long, hard day. Celebrate 420 exactly how you want to with Mood. Get 20% off your first order plus a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com with promo code SUPERMEGA. That's hello, M-O-O-D, dot com, slash, super mega. It's time to puff, puff, pass. Woohoo! We wrote the narration uh, after we had shot, like, the improv stuff. And we had so much fun writing that narration. We just, like, we're going through the clips and then just sitting together on the couch trying to think of, like, the next lines to, to put in. And so it was so funny just writing all those lines. But I think my favorite uh, bit that I added into the sketch was the thing that I, I, I laugh at what you designed around it was the Rick Astley's <laughs> Rick rolling around. Yeah. Just Rick. calling it because, like, I think that was just like we were typing up the narrative while watching the video, and that we're throwing out ideas, and that was just one of the things that I threw out. You were, you just, you said out loud, you were typing, you said Rick Astley's 1987 hit, Rick rolling around, and I laughed my fucking ass off. And that's I, how I knew. That, that's how you knew. When I, whenever I say something or, or whatever, and I hear you bust out laughing like that deep McGee laugh I know that I've struck gold the album cover you did for it <laughs> was wonderful too where I made I try I tried to make it look really realistic <laughs> it does it does Rick Rowland <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff where it's like one of those unfortunate things where while we're making the narration it's almost kind of in the same way that we did the book we're just trying to make each other laugh yeah and it's almost sometimes it gets to the point of like how dumb can we get it like sometimes 
we will we'll like putting a little bit of like thought into the joke, like coming up with the names of the experts or whatever. But other times it's just kind of like sometimes you th- throw shit at a wall. It doesn't stick. Sometimes it does. Sometimes that shit's sticky and hilarious. Yes. And in brown and stinky. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. See, that was gold right there. Brown, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that's, that's how Ryan and I write when we, when we write, uh, anything is we just try to write stuff to make the other one laugh. So we'll be like, we'll take turns typing and saying it out loud and hoping that the other one will bust out laughing. That's how we wrote the book. It's how we write our sketches. And I think that I think that's a good way to make uh, comedy stuff that is true to your sense of humor, and not making comedy stuff that is like just trying to appeal to, to an funny. audience. Yeah, like, there's a difference of like just trying to be funny and then like. I don't, it's the same thing with that, uh, just to connect it, it's like that collaborative aspect I really like about creating. So, like, collaborating with you is oh, yeah. so fucking fun. <laughs> it sucks, man. It is, it is. You- it's a great time, especially when uh, we went out near, the, near a beach and wrote, wrote the first half of our novel. That was fun. That was, re- that was a really good memory. We thought we finished three-fourths of it, but then we just started adding more and more because we just wanted to keep going and make making each other giggle so yeah. that's why you'll know you, you, the book is extremely well written and it is, is. A, it is a great form of uh, literature but the, you you can definitely definitely get the sense <laughs> in some parts where it's like why if you ever are reading it and you go i don't understand why this event happened this way it was just because we were to get a laugh out of each other you know you gotta throw in some some things that are just awfully stupid and it's almost that like no way you can put something this stupid in uh in a real book <laughs> in a real book or like this so the same goes for this sketch where it was like no way is something this stupid going to be in one of these videos just the contrast of course that's where the comedy comes from yeah well and the it's goofy, also zany randomness having that narrator like just hearing that narrator say some <laughs> with such a serious voice it was AI, by the way. The narrator was AI. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I, I just wanted to piss you all off. Give the man some credit. Dallin Bradford. Dallin, I don't know how you say his name, but apparently he narrates Mormon audiobooks. Uh, I saw some of you in the comments saying you recognized his voice. Uh, so I guess, I guess he does some Mormon audiobooks. All right. But, yeah, no, that was a really fun video to work on. Uh... And it was also one of, one of the really fun aspects was making uh, making all of the like evidence stuff. So making like court documents, making uh, like taking pictures, like all the evidence photos and and just the like the security camera footage. I I love the sign out sheet that you did. Thank you. I I just looked up the little east. There's Easter eggs in everything. Yeah, there's people little pointed out. I think all of them. I, I I'm trying to think of, of of something that I've seen that didn't yeah. get pointed out. I saw. Well, I don't want to spoil the Easter eggs. Exactly, they're for you to find and for you to share amongst amongst yourselves. I mean, speaking of Easter eggs, the opening to this podcast is chock full of them. Can you find them all? There's a lot of Easter eggs in the opening, and, and they and they change some some things change also. every week, every every week. episode, different things in the intro change, so it's different every time. It's pretty epic. Uh, but yeah, I, I I love that sketch. I'm excited to make more because that that's like a long form sketch. You know, yeah. it, well, it was very long for a sketch, but it it I think it it worked well. And I I hate talking about stuff before it comes out because people's imaginations rightfully run wild and think of the biggest most. Yeah. But I do want to say I'm looking at the footage for the current thing we're filming and Tucker just working his magic is. Mwah. I love Tucker. Why don't you marry him? Tucker, cin- c- cinematography genius. He is a savant Master. when it comes to holding the camera. He is so Pointing unbelie- it in the right direction. Points it in the right direction. <sighs> Make sure it's pretty focused. Gets that focus ring pretty close. Almost there. No, he is the most talented dude I have ever met. He he. Tucker knows how to color uh, with crayons and <laughs> finger paints. And, no, he knows how to color grade footage. He knows how to... He just Shoot. has this like spidey sense, this like unlocked yeah. different part of his brain that he's, can see things. He's, it's like he can see colors we can't. No, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, he probably can. Um, but God, <laughs> ha- he makes 
everything look so incredible. And uh, if our sketches only look good because of Tucker. Well, Tucker had zero fingerprints on the interrogation one. That was all you and me, baby. <laughs> Us putting a GoPro. Yeah, in, but in the, in the uh, going outside of a high school and filming <laughs> me walk down the sidewalk. <laughs> Yeah, that was we actually that was outside of a real high school. <laughs> but I think of uh, one thing I will say if we're if we're closing out on the discussion or if it's piddling away, it's is, piddling away. Yeah. yeah, is is that I uh, I something that you and I notice that always annoys us in a movie, for example, is when someone has a video camera. It's a home movie. Yeah, and it's the same HD quality as the movie. It's almost filmed. Like it's a heavy ass camera, you can almost feel the weight of the camera. Sharp and the the focus and the depth of field. And not only that, the effect they put on is just like a shitty, very high quality like record symbol flashing on and off. And then if they put like a VHS effect, it's just like a green screen overlay. It, yeah. it doesn't actually like mess with the image at all. And I don't know why it's so hard for these big budget studios to get that right. Like there are good plugins to make it look pretty convincing. But then they just go with the, the worst. I hate how when they the do, do it, fake yeah. VHS and movies or camcorder, it's still super HD. Or the uh, some of the worst is when it's uh, like a news anchor, and it's like you can tell they're not using studio cameras, or yes. they're not using the right cameras. They're not use just the setup in general. It's like it's it feels way too high, m- much too highly produced. Yeah, for I, these local news channels. If we ever have to uh, do a news segment for like a uh, short film or whatever, I want to actually use the same camera. I want to shoot it like on a news setup, so the mm-hmm. quality is the exact same, and it doesn't have that. Oh, we shot this with our HD camera on a green screen, and then made it look like the news. I wanted to actually like match the same quality. And the big part about this sketch was getting that. That, like the the interrogation footage itself, making sure that it was of subpar quality. Yeah, it's pretty compressed. Yeah, and and also getting uh, like buying an actual body cam to have body cam footage. Yeah, we used a real on Amazon, bought a real police body camera. New modern day body cam. So you know, there's things that you. But it didn't have. It didn't come with a strap. So for the walking <laughs> yep. shots, George is walking, and I'm just holding it on his chest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, just like for like the security camera footage at Padilla High School, you know, it's like matching, trying to match that quality. So lowering the frame rate, compressing it and crunching it down super hard. Just the uh, little details. Yeah, you just want to like, you, you just look at the real thing. You look at real security camera footage and you just want to try to match that as close as possible. So you got to, you know, make the text look like shit and do the whole video and then render it and then crunch it down and blow it back up and do that three times. And And ultimately it just does justice to the video. Like I couldn't imagine kind of just like kind of like half-assing any of the, in terms of half-assing, I mean just filming it with a regular Sony HD camera in a corner and then trying to make the, the quality lower um, by just filming on like 480p setting or something like that. I don't know. It just, I liked, I just like being able to kind of blend in with whatever we're satirizing in yeah, that specific yeah. sketch. Cause so, like, in this next sketch, it's not, we're not trying to go off for, a, not to get too in-depth about it or anything, but we're not trying to uh, do a old-timey vibe or a YouTube video uh, crime vibe. It's it, We're going for more of a, I'll just say, beautiful shots he looks great tucker just um but yeah uh fuck what was i gonna say i was gonna say uh you're gonna say how proud you are of yourself for taking your tea yeah you know by the time this episode comes out i'm i'm several testosterone shots in yeah you are baby yeah Mm mm-hmm and i with an ie oh thank you if it's ever spelled like that Maybe if it's like the name of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, w- that was a fun video. And if you look at all the comments, most of them are like, uh, wow, I made it eight minutes in before I realized this was fake. So that's, that is the goal. The goal is, is to blend in, like you said, with the real thing. Because uh, it got in the true crime video algorithm. So a lot of people would watch uh, an Ewu true crime video because you and i love jcs and ewu yeah those videos are so so good so we would just a lot of people will binge those and then ours comes up next in the autoplay because it's 
mix into the algorithm of that stuff. And that's that's what I love the most, that it found its way into true crime uh, YouTube and actually just blends right in. And it's also, you know, showing respect to the genre of, of, of content that we're, we're also poking fun at, in a, in a sense. We're not really poking too much. We're poking fun at it in certain instances, but we're more just kind of like having fun with it. Just trying to be goofy recreate it one for one those videos ob- uh, like explore with us like in jcs like so much work must go into each one of those videos but jcs doesn't upload as much ewu's kind of taken the doesn't make them anymore uh, not anymore i thought it was i think like, he quit oh, all, quit, all together quit. Oh, I, I i remember him posting uh like had to focus more on school or something no uh he was pissed about being pissed yeah no he he made a post uh the JCS guy just about I think it was demonetization about how they kept demonetizing his stuff and he was pissed and then just gave up maybe oh, damn I know good good stuff though good videos and explore with us is like very highly produced and we actually asked that narrator the guy that narrates explore with us if he would do our video and he uh, was unable to because of contractual uh, conflicts but uh, the guy that did it did a great job very sweet man. Yeah, sorry, I was looking up, and apparently he, JCS did quit. Over, mm-hmm. overall. Very sad, right? Yeah, someone, I, I did see a comment that made He me, started that genre, I think. Like, I'm pretty sure he was kind of the first one to... This was two years ago he quit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time flies. I know. It's already April. I will say, I, I do have to take a break from true crime stuff, because sometimes I'll get sucked into it, and I'll watch and a lot of it of course with most people with me is like it's curiosity yeah right and then you just get to the point where it's like i don't want to fucking hear about some traumatic moment in someone's life or whatever like i remember like recently there there's this uh i don't want to like i'm i'm not gonna go too far into because i don't really want to talk about it too much i guess the theme of what i'm saying is uh, this Apple River stabbing incident or something like that happened in 2022 uh, where uh, some like high schoolers were stabbed by a grown man in like a tubing river over an altercation uh, they had. And it's just I, I I'd be it, like I was interested at first and then you, you just start kind of like reading and it's like I don't want to like fucking fill fill my days with just death and trauma and negativity because doom it does, and gloom it does seep into yeah. kind of your uh your overall outlook sometimes so it's nice to take a little a little break i haven't watched any true crime videos in a while i kind of fell off it and honestly i think it's because editing the uh hours and just kind of you just get a little sick of it <laughs> it's like eh. <sighs> Man, hey maybe maybe i uh, will get in one of those moods later on but i I remember we were uh, talking of like, oh, I could, I could see, you know, bringing this kind of idea back at some point. But right now, it's, it's, we both kind of came to agreement where it's like we, we think we're proud of, like, what we created with this, and we want to move to like do something else. That's why I said the next one has like more high quality shots and stuff like that. And the thing before this sketch was the music video. I like doing different genres and yeah. themes and stuff and. Uh, who knows? It might happen because something pops off, and we go. Uh, but cool. but I can't. I I I, I don't like. I, I don't want to episodically just create something because it did well once, or like you know. Now, yeah. Now we're the YouTube crime parody people. I want to. I want to make stuff because we are passionate about it, not because uh, well, this got really good views, so we got to make another. However, I would. And this obviously is not making plans or promising. I think it would be fun to re-explore this genre down the road where we come up with another fake case. You know? Yes. Maybe I can be the detective this time and you. But I like putting a different spin on it. Like it's like it's more of a we style it as forensic files or something that is a little more yeah, I like kind of like like a drama documentary with you know the black backdrop behind people and they're 
like half shadow, half light when they're talking. Get the voice changer. Like, well, I don't know what really happened there. Like, they should b- barely even have like their like have half of their face shown. <laughs> so <it's> <laughs> you can like see someone, it like yeah. still through the shadow. Yeah, it's like on Nathan for you uh, with the barely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll censor your faces. He's gonna do this <laughs> stunt where basically he's gonna expose himself in front of a group of children if he can't <laughs> unlock his we handcuffs fast recently. enough. Well, I guess in the past two months, and he. Uh, Parents had to agree to let their kid be in this group that could potentially have a grown man expose himself. And he comes in and talks to the parents, and he's like, don't worry, we'll blur your faces. And they barely blur it. You could still see, like, every detail of their face, which is so funny. It just shows, like, that when someone's given, like, creative, full creative control over something, it's almost like they're just given a budget and the green light. Like, it feels like Nathan for you was that way. Eric Andre that is what I want. Whitest Kids You Know was that way. You get some of the most uh, genuine fun and giggles uh, yeah. from the people who make content that are that is more genuine to their own style of humor right. and what they could do. It's almost, you know, it's, it's the difference between someone going, give me a Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart comedy, you know, telling a writer to just go write that. And right. Then, you know, some guy just, some poor soul having to cobble together, get hard, you know. Great movie, by the way. <laughs> I've I've seen like but, half of it, but it's the difference between that and like what I think of like even whitest kids you know, where it's just they were given a budget and they almost became like oh shit, oh we're we're given some money and we can just make whatever we want and they use that budget and I I was always impressed with the stuff that they were able to produce yeah because I know that their budget wasn't like probably the biggest thing in still the world. looked really good because not only you have to think about budget. In terms of uh, that budget is also used, I believe, to pay cast and crew yeah. and all that. It's it, that it's, comes out of the budget. It's not like well, of course, cast and crew. I guess I mean the creators. Like everyone on board is also getting paid from that, so they have to maybe right. decide and divvy up, and then they have to hire a bunch of people and do the set. Because back when I was like a kid, I'm always like the budget. Like I don't know why, but I always thought like actors or the studio just gave them money to be in the movie, and then, and then the, the movie budget had is just for the the movie I, and the sets. I think a lot of people still think that probably, yeah, but that that is not the case. Yeah, the budget is what you uh, can spend, I believe, on everything. Everything well, that, there is usually a a separate marketing budget that isn't public, if I believe, or or I guess it depends on the project. Or is the marketing budget as well? I think marketing does in. come out of the budget. Okay, true. I think like that that is my dream is for a studio or some something just to give you and me money and go, here's here's a budget, go make whatever you want to make. Go and make we, the new Will Ferrell Kevin Hart comedy. Yeah. I, I, I I'd would still direct that. Oh yeah. I still write and direct still that. Still do it. I I just really uh I wanna be able to make what we want to make. I don't want un I don't want unfunny studio execs. Blowing our shit. Telling me where the giggles are at. Because we know where the giggles at. Take this joke out. No, no, no. Put this joke in. Maybe some, you know, it's real big on Twitter. Skibbity toilet? Put some of that in, maybe. Maybe uh, less feces, okay? No. Every episode, no. gallons and gallons. Like, like, this is going to be our Nickelodeon slime. Guys, in the <laughs> in the opening scene of the pilot, you you know, you've got a man covered in shit. <laughs> And he's eating poop. Can maybe just for a five straight minutes. Maybe just that's not a good opening scene. No, for but a it's pilot. funny because people are like watching it and it's stupid. They're like, "What? He's eating poop?" <laughs> Guys, we need to, we need you to take some poop out. It's called the Poop Brothers, dude. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> the Poop Brothers <laughs> as a greenlit show on like ABC or <laughs> ABC Family. So it still has to be like family friendly. <laughs> Speaking of family friendly, here's some inc- here's an inc- incredible family friendly commercial break. Okay. This message goes out to everyone who loves giving money to YouTubers. We just did a massive overhaul on our Patreon. It's huge. That's right. A big Patreon update has hit Super Mega's Patreon. We're introducing two brand new tiers. You know, there's the first tier, and you know, you just get you get all the content with that one. You get all the behind-the-scenes videos and exclusive shows and all of that good stuff. But with tier number two, 
You get, uh, what do, they, what do they get, Ryan? Through extensive research, we found out that a ton of people love stickers. So we thought, what the hell? Why not... Jesus fuck, dude. That's right, a monthly sticker club. And they'll come in this envelope. Premium stickers delivered to your door every single month. Matt worked his nuts off on the design of these envelopes, and if you want to enjoy the designs like I do, then become a sticker club member today. Look at these awesome stickers. They're designed by wonderful little artists and big artists. We don't we don't discriminate on size here. Look at I've got stickers on my face like a silly goose. Not only do you get stickers, as a member of Tier 2, you'll get your name in every new episode of Super Mega Show. Yeah, your name will go right in there somewhere. And the next tier after that, whoo! What, what is it called again? The executive producer tier, which comes with everything else in the other tiers, except your name gets put in a little special window at the end of the podcast to show that you mean business when it comes to supporting the Funny Brothers. So get your sweet little tukus on over to patreon.com slash supermega. Yes! 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 Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. <laughs> ah, Matthew just informed me that he has a topic that he'd like to discuss. No, don't say that. I want to bring it in naturally, organically. Oh, okay. Idiot. Luke, uh, Luke, just do the you know the the thing where you do. So, I'm I'm boring and don't have a topic ready. If only someone did. Oh, well, Ryan. What? Guess what? I have a topic ready to discuss. You have a topic prepared? Mm -hmm. No way. <laughs> yeah. That didn't feel natural. Should we do it one more time? Was, is there something, you don't have to tell me what it's about, but is there something that I can bring up that would lead naturally Say, into it? Uh, like it's hot outside today. It has to do with fruit. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Matt, I just ate a banana. One of my favorite fruits to eat. <laughs> well, speaking of fruit, Ryan... You know, I, I'm about to say something that is going to blow a lot of people's minds, maybe even yours. I'm ready. You know, a very popular flavor of things is acai. Yeah. You know? It's it's all over the place. There's acai bowls. There's acai flavored. I don't, I don't like acai bowls. Really? Really, no. But but go on. Dude, I'm, I'm legit convinced that acai is, is, was created by like a marketing team and they don't, acai berries don't actually exist. Because think about how popular that flavor is. Acai is everywhere. Have you ever seen an acai berry? Have you ever at the grocery store, you know, seen them? Have I, you ever had one? I'm going to be honest. I, here's the thing. I'm probably not the best person to ask because I uh, do not look for berries in the grocery store. I'm a, I'm a berry fiend. I don't like berries that much. Unless they're blueberries already baked into a muffin. See, I'm, I'm a berry head. I, I love berries so much. Or and, mashed into a, what's that? Dessert that cobbler? you and I love Cobbler Like I love it in Cobbler Ooh acai cobbler would be But basically Well you just said that there's no such thing as acai Well that, that's the thing If it was real I'd love it But I, I, I really start I'm starting to genuinely believe That acai berries are just They're not real They don't exist And it's just a fake flavor Like blue raspberry Because it's so popular But you can't get them anywhere Where are they? There's enough of them to to put in everything And make it a flavor But they're just They're just nowhere to be found The they actual berries They look like blueberries They do and every time I go to the grocery time. store, every time I go to Trader Joe's, I go to Sprouts, I go to Ralph's, whatever, I look for acai berries. I go to the berry section, and I'm like, do they have them maybe this time? No store has them. No, it's always acai sorbet, acai yeah. super fruit packs. Where where are the berries themselves? How? Okay, I'm going to look up where are, in all caps, the acai berries. Tell them. Tell them. You mean business. The species is native to eastern Amazonia, especially in Brazil, mainly okay. in swamps and uh, floodplains. Acai palms are tall, slender trees growing uh, to more than 25 meters tall, maybe. Wow. Uh, it says 25 and then M. Uh, and then dot, dot, dot. So I'm just kind of making a, uh, a I think, I, yeah, probably meters. But Wait, dude, for real, where, like, why... I've, have you ever seen one in person? No, I have not. I, I, again, I don't look for berries in the grocery store because I'm above berries. You know, not I, Kramer, but, well, but yeah, the edible, of course. the edible. Not to say he's not edible because I'm sure if you cooked him up and roasted him, whoo, golden brown too. A I bet he's got brown berry Kramer tender skin on a spit. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Sorry, now I'm getting hungry for some berry. Yeah, that that sounds pretty good right no, about any, now. Anyway, the, back to the... Um, when I was in, like, middle school, this kid on the bus had acai berries. Sorry, did this bus go round and round? Uh, the wheels did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I remember I, I had one, and it was delicious. And it was the only time I've ever come in contact with an acai berry... But now looking back, I'm starting to wonder. I'm like, so, well, where the fuck did this kid get acai berries? What if it was just a really good blueberry and Could he tricked a, me? You wouldn't know either way. Where's my acai berry muffins? See, that would be delicious. I don't want them just in like superfood, you know, bowls or capsules. I, I want, I want real juicy, plump, ripe acai berries. Where can I get them in Los Angeles? People often ask us why they can't just buy acai berries yeah. in the store and why it has to be frozen. There's actually a very good reason for that. Because of the levels of healthy omega fats found in the acai fruit, if it's not frozen after being freshly picked, will start to turn rancid. Oh. So you gotta eat them so they, away. So they, they spoil so quick that they literally can't sell them in stores. Yeah. I guess that... Uh that, I mean, that could also just, that's a real easy, you know, fake excuse. You, give, you, you could go get some frozen acai berries, put them in the microwave on defrost, and enjoy. That's true. Maybe I'll do that on the way home. Doesn't that not sound great, though? On the way home, I'll, I'll try that. You'll have to get back uh, in the next podcast, and I'll ask you about it. I will. Okay. I will ask you On about the drive it. home, I will go buy frozen acai berries. I'm going to ask you about it, too. Okay, ask and me I, about I, it. I will. I believe you. Good, because I am going to. Okay, dude. And I'm going to ask you about your mama. Gotcha. One more fucking time, buddy. One more fucking time. Come on, man. It's just, I, I do the joke, you do the joke. It's back and forth, man. It's just a joke. Just not today? Not okay. today. Uh, well, let's, all right. Well, let's just get back to the I'll say. Fuck you, man. Um, yeah, I, I I think, you know, like blue raspberry, you know, like it's a popular flavor, but blue raspberries don't freaking exist. You know, I think acai is another one of those. It's just a, it's a, it's a marketing concoction. You think that Google's lying to me? Yeah. I think Google lies. I don't think Google, uh, is always, uh, an honest little search engine. I'm going to look it up on Google. Does Google lie? I think Google is a bearer of false witness. Does Google lie? Conclusion. Does Google lie? It is highly probable, but it does not actively manipulate its biases. Instead, these biases are rooted in factors that contribute to the development of high-quality websites encompassing both content and user experience. This is on marketinglad.io. A marketing lad, of course. Does Google lie? A marketer's perspective. Dude, what about a... Remember Lad Bible? I remember not really too much, but I do know of it. Yeah, it was they would just post like viral clips, mm -hmm. Lad Bible. We need we need to start Lad Mega. You know, we got to collaborate with Lad Bible. Steal some people's content. We got to steal some content and uh, you know, put, get millions of views on it. Put a big watermark on it, dude. Lad Bible is like basically my, the best way I could describe Lad Bible is like a guy that you went to high school with. Uh, now you're you're 28 and you see him on Facebook, this guy that you didn't know very well, who kind of peaked in high school, just sharing, like, clearly an AI video posted by Lad Bible and thinking it's real. Do you think they have any connection with the I Can Ask Cheeseburger heads of the world? I could see, you know, I Can Ask Cheeseburger was a network that over-encompassed many websites, like Failblog, mm -hmm. and, uh... God, going to Failblog in high oh school. Oh my God, Failblog. Just scrolling through all those fails? There were so many fails. Scrolling through those memes? Dude, when you scroll through those fails, it's just, it's, for me, me and my cousins, we'd sit down at the computer uh, at, like, a sleepover and just scroll, fail after fail after fail. Oh. Like, oh, that, that's a good fail. That's a crazy fail. And every picture had the white impact font that said, Fail. Yep. Remember, they used to put that in each. Uh, Luke, put that in the corner of the podcast right now. Put the put the fail thing. Isn't that sick? That's so sick. It's it's awesome. Is Failblog still a website? Like, I wonder if they're still. Uh, wonder if they're still cooking up. Let's see. There's there's no way they're still you know posting fails. 
I'm looking up Fail Blog. That was, I mean, that was a big website. What what other oh, websites did they have though? Failblog.cheeseburger.com. Dot cheeseburger. Everything was gone. She didn't get to keep anything. You know, it's a uh, what is this? What the fuck is this? Twenty strange habits people discovered after moving in with their significant others. Dude, who would bite his nails and drop the little pieces all over the apartment? What? What is this? Okay, so guys, if you go to uh, failblog.com. It takes you to a, a website that is about America ending and splitting up into several other countries. And it's, uh, it's, it's asking the question of if, if, if this is a good idea, it seems. Matt, you need to go to store.cheeseburger.com. Store.cheeseburger.com? Yeah, with a Z. And no E at the end of cheese. And I need you to go to failblog.com. I did, and this is how I got there. You didn't go to failblog.com. I went to fail. I went to failblog.cheeseburger.com. See, you didn't go to failblog.com, and which then, is about the end of America. And then I went to whoop. Then I went to cheeseburger. Okay, let me see. Let me see. And then I hit the new tabs after hitting cheeseburger, and then went the cheeseburger shop. Dude, I bet the cheeseburger shop has some unbelievably epic items. It's gonna blow your mind once you gander at it. What if we get some stuff? Maybe in the next episode we can show off our swag. Fail blog. God, you're going to love all this Wait, stuff. Wait, I'm trying to find the shop. Where's the fucking shop, dude? Store.cheeseburger.com. Oh, st- okay. Sorry, I was on fail blog. It's still a website, though. Okay, here we go. Store.cheeseburger.com. Guys, why aren't you using the computer setup that you shut up for the podcast? Shut, shut your mouth. It's unplugged. Oh, dude. The official Nyan Cat calendar? Yep. 2024 edition? Yes. And the golden neon cap mug? We need those for the which podcast. Which was listed for 24.99 but is now reduced to 19.99. It's it's on sale. And also the angelic neon cat notebook Dude, which was no listed way. at 29.99 but is now reduced down to 21.99. Wait, Ryan, even better. There's the mix and match bundle where you can get a neon cat shirt, neon cat mouse pad and a mug and and the calendar all together for $119.95. Originally priced at $169.95. Mm-hmm. That's a whole $50 off. That's 30% off. Wow. This is incredible. Wait, and dude, they, they even have <laughs> they have they have what? a Christmas sweater with a cat on it that says I can has a Merry Christmas. Oh fuck. <laughs> we got to we got to buy out the shop. We have to buy everything in I, this shop. I'm going to look at um best sellers. Ryan, what if I got it's you the Christmas stuff? Yeah, it is. What if I got you this this shirt? I know you like black shirts. It's a black shirt and it says I can has cheeseburger. I would proudly wear it on whatever podcast we get it in for. Okay. Buster Brown. It's $34. <laughs> That's expensive. And this better be good quality shirt. And I know you're probably like, but you guys charge that much for a shirt. Okay, well, we have A, high quality shirts. B, we don't have a company doing it. We have to do it all ourselves. So we have to design it, hand pack it, you know, all that good stuff. I'm seeing bit cats, women's, like, shoes, but no, no men's shoes. Look at these. Wouldn't you love wearing these around town? Dude, oh my god. Some I can has cheeseburger. Dude, what do, what do you think uh, the cheeseburger network, their net worth? Because, there, dude, there was a point in like probably 2008, 2009 when, the, when I can has cheeseburger was probably raking in crazy amounts of money. Uh, I can has cheeseburger is a blog format website featuring blah, blah, blah. Does it have a Wikipedia page? As many as it's receiving as many as... 1.5 million hits a month per day a its, day at its peak in May 2007 damn well I mean that that's pretty good money if, with like ads if they're running ads on I can ask cheeseburger that's that's pretty good I'm gonna wow s- um, yeah I mean it was a uh, owner cheeseburger incorporated look up cheeseburger incorporated net worth okay cheeseburger Inc. Net. I feel like we could also just we should change the name of Super Mega Show to the Look It Up Podcast, where it's just us looking things up. A group of investors acquired the website in September 2007 for two million U.S. dollars. Okay. The blog became the flagship site of the Cheeseburger Network, uh, led by Ben Hu. Ben, ben Hu. Huh? <laughs> dude, dude, the network also includes Fail Blog and Know Your Meme. In 2016, the network was acquired by oh. Literally Media. Wait, they have. So, who's Literally Media? They do Know Your Meme? That's I Can Ask Cheeseburger? 
Literally Media is a network of legacy, iconic internet brands broadcasting the number one humor network on Comscore, creating net, uh, content in the internet culture. Hey, man, maybe they'll buy us one day. I'm going to look up net worth of this company. Uh, Literally top competitors are Little B Books, Penguin Random House UK, and oh. Salon Media Group, and they have annual revenue of... Forty-four point four million and one hundred sixty-six employees. There's so there, there's that much money in in old memes. That's pretty profitable. We have a know your meme page. I think that's our biggest accomplishment. Is that Super Mega has a know your meme page? What can we say? We're accomplished. We're a meme, I guess. You know, I can has Super Mega. <laughs> okay, now now that's a shirt. You just designed our next merch. Boom. I can has Super Mega. That's genius. Dude, that's great. Everyone would wear it out and definitely not be embarrassed about going out in public in something like that. We're going to be rich. Dude, great idea. Only if we change our names. <sighs> <laughs> that took me a second to like, that joke, it went over my head and then it pumped the brakes and it turned around. The wall, it yeah. hit the back of your head and you went. <laughs> it got me. That was really funny. That's good. That's really fucking good, dude. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. I love you a lot. I, so you I know. love you. I, I know. I know. But sometimes you, nah, you don't have to. Remind, I feel like it's more. Th this is becoming more of me reaffirming to you that I love you instead of you telling me that I love you at this. But it's fine. No, just dude. as long as you know. I just, I just want you to know that I do love you. You think it's like me seeking you, validation? Like, the valid I can't give you constant validation. I, not, I'm focused in other other areas. You know, I can't constantly be in, involved in validating, you know, my love for you. And I feel like I do that every day by, by showing up and giving you a little smile. Focus in other areas. Yeah, like your other YouTube channel with Luke. Well, that's... You're putting more work into that these days than Super Mega. I just think people need a place where the Let's Plays can, can roam free. You know, we do the streams, which is fine, but... People miss their Let's Plays. and Well, I know. I just we, wish you had told me, like, hey, we should do more Let's Plays instead of just basically doing Super Mega 2.0 with Luke. It's not like Super Mega 2. We just watch Game Grumps and then commentate over their Let's Plays. I, we're, we're not even playing the game, so it's not even the same thing. I knew you would bitch about it, and that's why I made I'm it so, bitching so about different it, dude. and separate. I just we're feel the number one place to go for commentary on the, on the recent Game Grumps episode. I just feel left out. That's all. Well, if they do dream, dream Course again, you can join in, maybe. Really? Yeah, or whatever game you would like them to play, and then you can join in on those episodes. I got to text Danny and, and ask him to play maybe a certain game that I would really enjoy, and then I can join in on the commentary. Yeah, you see? But we, has, you know. I wonder how Aaron and Dan uh, would react <laughs> if they find out that Oh, as a joke, they started a new YouTube channel where they just commentate over our videos, and they've uploaded 24 of them so far. <laughs> but, like, we do it in a way where, like, you don't see – we don't change anything. We just download the video, <laughs> upload it in poor quality with our voices in the back. And our voices are, like, the same – we're all talking at, like, yeah, the same time. They're the same volume as, like, Aaron and Dan. <laughs> I love the idea of downloading Game Grumps and then – Putting our voice in like we're there in the recording, <laughs> like having fun with them. That's good. Like we <laughs> yeah. cut out something that like Dan responds with and we insert <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> we just cut Dan out and one of, and it's one of us saying the response or like whatever Dan was saying. <coughs> I think that's a good video. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to cough. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I just had to clear my throat a little bit. <clears throat> drink some of that water, man. There's no more there's there's not a drop to drink anymore. Hey. Get a load of that. You could have just sipped out of the cup, dude. I got cooties or something? I just, I just don't want to... Cheers. Mm. Uh, God, that's that good water. that clears my whistle. That clears my whistle, too. Mmm! Mmm, mmm, mmm. No, but, so was the, the... The whistle is your lips, right? No, oh. I've, I've always thought the whistle was like your, your throat. I, I gotta wet my whistle. Because your whistle, it's, you know, it's like your voice... You know, so uh, you gotta wet your throat, wet your whistle. They gotta lick their lips. Let me wet my whistle. Because mm. you there don't need go. water to wet your whistle <laughs> if it's no, your I lips. But, it, but don't people usually say wet my whistle with alcohol, or is that just a made up thing in my head? I need to wet my whistle. No, I mean, it's both. I think it just means you need something to drink. But alcohol dehydrates you. I know. You might think you're getting hydrated because you're drinking liquid, 
when you drink alcohol. But no, you're actually dehydrating yourself. You know what we should do? What? We should come out with a mouthwash that it just, it, it really does do what mouthwash typically does, which is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, At least for you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Whatever. Um, but we should have one that gives you like the after breath of like drinking a beer. <laughs> so like, no, we should do mints where it just makes your breath smell like beer or cigarettes. <laughs> just like shit like that. Just just mints that basically make your breath smell like shit. <laughs> have you ever wanted to, uh, you know, have your breath smell like you just smoked a cigarette without actually smoking a cigarette? We can call them the Tuckers. The Tuckers? Because Tucker doesn't shower? Or, or put on deodorant. Or brush his teeth. It's getting, it's getting really out of hand. Or clip his nails. He he saw that we had mentioned this on a previous podcast episode. Yeah, nothing changed. Well, nothing changed except he got a little he got a little attitude with me. He popped a little sass off. He goes, he goes, oh yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure people really respect <laughs> me as a person. And I said, well, they might if you <laughs> if you, you put know, on some deodorant, buddy. Learned a little personal hygiene. <laughs> and I I said, Tucker, look, man, I'll like if you need to come over and and I need to show you how to shower properly. We can do We've that. done that already, though. We've scrubbed him down time and time again. But every time he yells and physically assaults us and throws yep. us into the walls, and then we're the ones like laying bleeding in the shower or bleeding on the floor. He made me slip that one time like, we were scrubbing him, and yeah. I hit my head on the shower wall. And he runs out butt-ass naked into, into the hills of L.A., and we have to go chase after him, and I'm done. I'm done with that responsibility. And I'm scared that when he's running away naked all scared, if he gets arrested— Hit by a car. Oh, th- arrest, that's even worse. Arrest, you know, no, hit by all a of car. these things uh, come to mind when he escapes the house. Garage. Yeah, well, this is like a little house. Yeah, we call it Tucker's little house. It's, t- it's Tucker's little shack. Yeah, Tucker's little house. Uh, and you know, I, I don't get very close to it because you could smell from the outside. But God, he's good with a camera. That's the Fuck. thing. So it's like I'll put up with it. One but of the most talented motherfuckers we know. Not at cleaning himself. No, not at cleaning. But his, a camera his body. work and coloring. As you said earlier, with crayons, markers, finger paint. He does paint. rely on stencils a good bit. but Yes. Oh, I remember he did that really beautiful butterfly, and we were like, Tucker, you did this all by yourself? Turns out it was just a stencil that he had just traced. Yeah. You know, it was only one color. It was just red with crayon. I was just impressed that he got the shape so accurate. He would love those, uh, what are those notebooks where they were kind of like patterned in a way where you could color in between the fuzzy black Coloring parts? books? No. Oh, were they fuzzy? So you're being a smartass again. No, 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 no. Speaking, I, speaking ahead. I really thought before, you meant coloring learning. books. No, I'm, ta- I'm talking about those. Spe- I would know what a coloring book is called. I'm talking about those, like, fuzzy. They have, like, fuzzy black areas, and you color within the white areas. It is, a, But they're called something specific. It is a coloring book, but it's a specific brand or something. Do you not remember that? They were popular, like, in elementary no, school. No, I don't remember. Hey, if, I, if I saw it, maybe I would. May mayhaps I would. Let me let me let me see that shit. Velvet like the velvet coloring books. Velvet coloring books. Where it was like all like this stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you could like color it with marker. I guess there was no there was no actual I thought like a sp- I there was like a popular company that like had a bunch of those books or shit. I feel like, like Lisa that. Frank would have would have done that. I'm gonna look up Lisa Frank. F- <laughs> yeah, Lisa Frank fuzzy book. Lisa Frank, yeah, fuzzy I, book. I, I, you know, I could use a little bit of Lisa Frank's fuzzy book if you catch my drift. Two thousand four, yeah. Lisa Frank, black velvet, yeah, white fuzzy pocket folder, angel kitty. Told you, Lisa Frank, dude. I love Lisa Frank. You know what? Actually, I thought about because I think of you. Don't remember these? That's Lisa Frank. Yeah, yeah, oh. dude. I, I honestly, for the visual. Viewers who don't know what Lisa Frank is, Luke, throw up a picture of Lisa Frank. Uh, basically, I thought about how sick it would be if I got a full Lisa Frank back piece, like my full back tattooed like Lisa Frank. Uh, but maybe that's just stupid. But I might be kind of cool. Regardless, I want a Lisa Frank tattoo, neck tattoo. Get the little cute little tiger, you know? You fucking hot. Thanks, man, with the rainbow butterflies. Fuck yeah. Make it a full chest tattoo. Like a Lisa Frank chest piece. That'd be pretty cool. Or like just circles and different colors that start from your nipple. I could, uh, 
just get a, a whole piece that looks like a coloring book, like a whole page <laughs> of a coloring book on my chest and let you color it. Would you let me? Of course. With a tattoo gun? Yeah, for sure. I don't have any, I, I've never taken any tattoo lessons. You don't need them. You just color inside the lines. How hard can it be? You know? Now, I'm going to be honest. I think the reason why I'm, why I love these things so much is I, as a, as a kid, I, as a, as a young boy in South Carolina, I didn't think it appropriate for me to color in these velvety, bright colored book. You know what I mean? Like using the bright colored markers to make yeah. rainbow colors. Of you were too scared. Cats. It, 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 you know, your stepdad would have cast judgment upon you. So I just drew stick figures at war. Yeah. Because Two that's... different teams. And I realize it could look weird now because there were the the uh, the white stick figures and then the black stick figures. At that war was, with each other. Yeah. But that was only because I didn't have any. It was just a pencil. I didn't have any other color. I guess I could have shaded one gray or something. <laughs> and it was nothing to do with. I wasn't imagining Race it wasn't a race war. It was just the different stick figure armies, the black stick figures and the white stick Yeah, and figures. if you're just drawing with a pen or a pencil, you know, and that's the be- easiest way to, you know. It's, it's Luckily, it's not as bad as the comic I made when I was in second grade or first grade. <laughs> what was I that? I got in a lot of trouble for it. I think I might have said this on the podcast once, but it was a, a character who had like a like a really cool – I modeled it after Spy Kids 3D, how they had those cool suits. Yeah. It was about one of those who had a, uh, he had a really cool one of those suits, and it was black. And uh, I was taking Spanish for the first time, and I wanted to uh, make it more creative. It boy? Yes. <laughs> oh my that was the name of the comic I made was, was the word black in Spanish followed by boy. No, but my friends, uh, my best, one of my best friends in like first grade was Puerto Rican and his mom would help out with the class. So she spoke Spanish. She saw me coloring it and goes, Matthew. (laughs) And I was like, what? And she took it from me and she was so upset and she showed the teacher and I I did not understand why it was an issue. So I changed it to Verde boy, but she, she explained to me that boy. Yeah. I made a suit green. But she she she, she, ex, she explained to me what, like that that it was inappropriate that I called it that and I didn't understand why because they didn't tell me why it was inappropriate I just wasn't allowed to do that. That just sounds like you were you were tr- you were trying to show initiative in your in the in the brutal South Carolina education system. Yeah. You were you were trying to show initiative in race relations. Yes, I, I'm you know I'm over here trying to spread multicultural activity, uh, mixing it with art. I mean, this is this is great. This is and what I'm the South about needs. The, the Spanish language, right, right, because right. Because the boy, I'm guessing, was was a Spanish boy. No, uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think was I made he, him Hispanic. Was he just a white boy? <laughs> I mean, it was just a. I just drew a boy, you know, <laughs> with like a cool black suit, and he was called Black Boy. I wish it went from Black Boy to Green Boy. I wish that I had that <laughs> comic somewhere. She might have actually taken it and like gotten rid of it. Disgusting. I wish <laughs> I wish out I had young that. kids' dreams and aspirations. Now, but now that we have a following, you know, and they <laughs> they and and they support us through Patreon. Fuck and stuff, the second book. Why don't we just we can make Verde you know, Boy two? Well, go back to the original <laughs> idea and make it into a a, a full length motion picture. Ooh, <laughs> not a bad idea, huh? Would it be in Spanish? No. <laughs> he just thought it. He just thought it was cool because. Uh, it's a black suit. No, how about? Well, he thought black boy sounded a little too racially motivated, so he changed it to the Spanish version. So then it's different, you know. Not black suit boy. We still want to go with black boy. Well, dude, I mean, it's my childhood idea. <laughs> you, I don't. Do you really want to put your fingers in it and change it? Verde lad, come on. Uh, <laughs> now you're trying to stop black me. lad. I think the issue is. We'll work on it. We'll we'll, okay. we'll we'll shop it. We'll we'll workshop sure. it. Sure. Well, speaking of uh, workshopping, uh, this has nothing to do with workshopping. I just wanted to transition because if you look on screen right now, the, all all of the beautiful podcast producers and executive producers are being thanked. Yep. Luke, put some applause in for all of these beautiful. Actually, and even have but some. Not, not not Lady Gaga's applause because that would give us a copyright, copyright strike. Uh, strike. Um, and and even Luke, throw some confetti cannon, a confetti explosion. Go, see you guys get that too. Maybe uh 
Maybe a video of you clapping yourself, Luke. Yeah, there he is in the corner. He's clapping. He's so with, happy. With, with the sound of cymbals uh, clanging together every time your hands come together, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's He's going to love him. editing this. He's going to have a good time. He probably hates that we put him in. Damn, the well, cymbals are himself. still going. Wow. All right, Luke, you can stop with the cymbals now. Thank you. I said thank you. Okay. He, now he's replaced them with cartoon boing sounds. Luke, knock it off. Just stop. Luke, seriously, please stop. We're trying to end the podcast. Okay, well, we need to end the podcast now. Uh, and and you can actually go to our Patreon if you want to get your name in the next episode of Super Mega Show. But also to catch uh, the Super Mega Junior, which is an extra bit of this podcast that we record and upload specifically for Patreon and Patreon patrons. Yes. Patreon uh, subscribers. So if you watched this episode and said, damn, I wish I had more. You can go uh, on Patreon right now. We also have a sticker club that's new. You can sign up for and get monthly stickers. And there's uh, behind the scenes, and we got a lot of stuff stacked up that you can go enjoy. And I actually, as a surprise, uh, I've redrawn the first issue of my childhood comic, and it's on Patreon now. Are you cool if I put if I redraw it and put it? I up? don't. Come on, man! It's an innocent childhood idea. Can, or can we just change it to Verde Boy just for this one? You do. You're just like her. You're just like my friend's mom. Just work with me a little bit. Okay. Fine. Okay, you can see uh, Verde Boy with Color by Ryan. Okay. It's on, it's on Patreon now. I'll color it. I'll color it for cool. you. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. We love you so much. We will see you in the next episode of Super Mega Show next week. And uh, until then, stay safe, stay warm, stay happy, stay epic. Gay. Oh, or stay gay. Yeah. Happy is gay is happy. You're right. A lot of gay people are happy. Stay gay, Some of guys. Them are, you know, life is life sometimes, well, yeah. I guess. I mean, a lot of straight people are unhappy too. Yeah, so get over it. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> stay gay, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs> the first, first Markiplier, yeah. you know? I had to do it. You know what? I'm not feeling the Howard Stern look anymore. Yeah, hey, give us the Matt Watson. <laughs> this is the Matt Watson. Such a dark wig. It's a really dark wig. <laughs> what if my hair naturally just was this curly?